Well, thank all of y'all. Thank all y'all for joining me today. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of fun. Like I said earlier, um, iPhoto 11 is amazingly powerful, and you're going to learn how to use it uh, in amazing ways today. You just will not believe what you can do in this uh, completely user-friendly program. I feel like iPhoto 11 is a grown-up version. Apple really put a lot of work into this, and I feel like a lot of things are simplified, and I feel like it's one of the best versions we've had of iPhoto yet. So. Let's look at how to use it. First, I have to tell you about my coupon. <laughs> so I'm the author of Photoshop CS5, The Missing Manual, as well as iPhoto 11, The Missing Manual. And the publisher, for those of you who don't win one of the six free eBooks today, you can get them at a really great price. O'Reilly Media is offering 40% off the print version, which is a good deal, and 50% off of eBooks. You do need to go to www.oreilly.com to purchase that, and at checkout, you can enter the code AUTHD, A-U-T-H-D. So take advantage of that. Tell your family and friends about that great deal. Also, if you have not planned your family vacation yet, I would love for y'all to come on vacation with me. <laughs> I'm going to do a digital photography workshop on the Danube in uh, Europe. We're going to be cruising from Budapest to Nuremberg, and then we're going to take a hop over to Prague for a couple of days. And I've got three classes on board. We're going to talk about how to take better pictures no matter what camera you have and editing in both iPhoto and Elements, and then sharing your photos using both of those programs. In other words, getting them out of your computer and out into the, the great world. I'm uh, also going to do two photo walks, uh, so we'll put theory into practice. So you remember all those photo tips that you'll learn, then we'll go out and take some great shots and share them. So if you're interested in that, go to photocruisewithlisa.com. Also, on my own website, graphicreporter.com, I have oodles and gobs of tips, tons of tips on Elements and Photoshop and iPhoto and you name it, it's in there. <laughs> it's totally free. There's step by step by step with screenshots, so no matter what your proficiency level, you will be able to follow them. And I'm also a stock photographer and honored to be the chief evangelist of iStockPhoto.com, the world's most amazing resource for royalty-free stock photos, illustrations, flash components, audio, and video. And royalty-free means you buy it one time and you can use it again and again and again as long as it's for promotional purposes. And you might be asking yourself, well, as photographers, why would we need to buy stock photography? Well, let's say you were going to make a collage. We did some of that in Elements yesterday, and you could fade a nice wedding photo, romantic photo into a bed of roses. Well, you could get that bed of roses shot from iStock Photo. And if a bed of roses isn't appropriate, then you can find what is appropriate on iStock Photo. <laughs> they literally have pictures of everything. <laughs> and speaking of iStock, uh, all the, uh, the Creative Live folks have a great deal with iStock Photo. So if you uh, haven't signed up yet, you can sign up through Creative Live's special landing page and you'll get 20% off of the credits there. So that's a good deal. And that's iStockPhoto slash creativelive.php. So do take advantage of that and pass that along to your, your friends and family as well. All right, tip number one. Here we go. <laughs> Back up your library. Yes, it may sound boring, but you must do it because it's not a matter of when you're going to have a hard drive crash. I mean, it's not a matter of if you're going to have a hard drive crash, it's when you're going to have it. So do back up your library. It's especially important when we change from one version to iPhoto to the next. I don't know if any of y'all remember the little hullabaloo that we had with this version of iPhoto, iPhoto 11, which technically is iPhoto 9. If you were to do an about info on it, you would find that it's version 9, but it is 2011, so that's what it's called. Um, some folks, some poor folks, lost their entire photo library when they upgraded. Yeah, that was unfortunate. But if you back up your library, you won't ever have to worry about that because you can always get it back. So let me show you how to do that. Your iPhoto library is tucked away inside your user folder in your pictures folder. Okay, so go to your user folder, pictures, and then you're going to find a file called the iPhoto library. And it's just one single file, which makes it really easy to back up. It is going to be extremely large, though. As you can see, my own iPhoto library is nearly 47 gigs, so that's not exactly going to fit on a DVD. <laughs> so what you want to do is have an external hard drive plugged into your Mac that you can just back that file up. Um, 
so that's a really great thing to do. Now you may be wondering why it's a single file when you've got oodles and gobs of pictures in it. That's because iPhoto likes to squirrel your photos away into its own little secret spot so you can't mess with them. <laughs> uh, this is happening because iPhoto is really a database with an image editor plopped on top of it. And the database portion does not want you moving photos around because once it knows where they are, it's keeping track of them. It's uh, creating, when you import pictures, it's creating uh, the small thumbnails of the picture so that your scrolling experience through all your photos is nice and fast. It's locking away the originals in another folder that, that aren't ever touched because iPhoto is a non-destructive editor, which means that all the different edits we're going to be doing today, iPhoto is simply keeping a running list of them. And then when you choose to export that picture, that's when they get, actually get applied. But you can always go back to your original. So it's what we call non-destructive editing. You don't ever have to worry about messing up in iPhoto because you can always go back from whence you came. So, but that's another reason why iPhoto squirrels the, the photos away because it does not want you moving them around. It doesn't want uh, you to accidentally delete something. Tip number two is to always check for updates. That little um, losing all your photos uh, hullabaloo <laughs> got fixed real fast, as you can imagine, by Apple with an update. Well, if you uh, are not running the latest and greatest version of iPhoto, you might not have gotten that fixed. And that's why it's important to always make sure that you have that. Now, Mac users know that we have something called software update in our system preferences. And if you've got software update set to check for uh, software updates automatically, then you probably don't have to worry about uh, going into iPhoto and looking at what version you have. But if you don't have that turned on, then you will need to manually trigger these updates to happen. And you don't even have to go into your system preferences. You can do it right from iPhoto. So you can go up under the Apple or the iPhoto menu rather at the top left of your screen after you've launched iPhoto. And you can cruise on down that, that menu and find check for updates. And that's going to trigger your software update preferences pane to go out and contact the great mothership of apple.com and see if there's any newer software that you can download. Currently, we're running uh, iPhoto 9.1.3. So you want to make sure that you do have that installed. <laughs>